Hi, and good morning here in America. Good day, good evening, and the rest of the world. And it's my privilege to present uh, this month uh, Ipsos Journal Club. Uh, we are at the 40th uh, Journal Club. And I'm, uh, I'm very pleased to present a very special guest, uh, the author of this uh, wonderful paper, uh, Dr. Christine Straw. Uh, Christine is clinical professor at the Department of General Visceral Vascular and Transplant uh, Surgery of the University Hospital of, uh, of Magdeburg. And also she's clinical professor at the Department of General Surgery at the University Hospital of, of Gera. Uh, and this wonderful, wonderful paper, uh, it's uh, entitled Outcome of Revisional Epileptic Surgery After Failed Sleep Astrectomy, a German Multicenter Study. Uh, Christine, uh, thank you for a wonderful, wonderful paper. It's a very, very interesting topic. Uh, revisional surgery is uh, getting bigger every year. So we are very thrilled to uh, hear from you, your results, your conclusion, and to discuss a little more about this paper. Thank you, and uh, the, the webinar is yours. Thank you for opening and thank you for the introduction, Sebastian. And I believe that we should start with the presentation for our data on the uh, long term results of reoperation after sleeve gastrectomy. And then we will we have a big discussion. Dear ladies and gentlemen, hi, everybody. I'm proud to present you the data of our paper on outcome of revisional surgery after failed sleep gastrectomy. These are data from the German Bariatric Surgery Registry. I present you the data on the outcome of revisional bariatric surgery after failed sleep gastrectomy as the data from German Bariatric Surgery Registry as a German multicenter study. We could evaluate for the study 949 patients after failed sleeve gastrectomy, and we evaluated the revisional surgery of pre sleeve gastrectomy, rent Y gastric bypass, mini gastric bypass, and duodenal switch. The endpoints of our study were where to evaluate the incident and the remission of sleep apnea, diabetes, hypertension, GERD weight and BMI as well as the complication rates. And so we could found that the complication rate after the sleeve gastrectomy is higher, for instance, than after ruined Y gastric bypass after failed gastric bending. A gastric sleeve gastrectomy, excuse me. Patients with our patients which we included in our study were collected in the German Bariatric Surgery Registry in between 2005 until December 2020. In this time in Germany, we could collect the data from 27,939 patients with primary sleeve gastrectomy, of whom 2,195 patients required a revisional surgery. These are 7.9% of all our patients. As the research focuses on the four most frequent revisional procedures, data from 400, from 949 patients were underwent revisional surgery. Loss of follow-up within the first year of the patient was 52.4%. The most common bariatric procedures were performed through a Y gastric bypass in 665 patients, re sleeve gastrectomy in 95 patients, doing a null switch in 93 patients, and mini gastric bypass in 141 patients. We had excluded our all patients with the age under uh, the age of 18 patients with had not a complete follow up at least of one year, and we exclude patients with other retail procedures, for instance, with ZASI or ZADI operations. 
which we evaluate the endpoints of perioperative demographic variables and comorbidities, the interval between sleeve gastrectomy and revisional surgery, the interactive general and postoperative complication rates, the mean weight loss, BMI loss, and the percentage excess weight loss after one year of follow-up, the remission and comorbidities that one year of follow-up, if especially for diabetes, reflux, hypertension, and sleep apnea. The key points of our study were that the, the, despite the benefits of sleeve gastrectomy, 77.9 percent of our patients had the need of revisional surgery, especially in the case of weight regain or an increase in comorbidities. Also, the certain revisional surgical techniques have a higher complication risk. Uh, all techniques we know are safe and effective treatments after sleeve gastrectomy, but we want to evaluate is there any technique with a higher surgical risk in the reoperation. Revisional surgery for unsuccessful sleeve gastrectomy can lead to weight reduction and comorbidity remission, but if there is any procedure which is prior to the other surgical treatment in the metabolic surgical device. And we made the key point that the patients have to be well informed if they undergo bariatric revisional surgery on the several procedures and the procedures intermediate and long-term complication risk. And these are the main key points of our study. If we look to the distribution on the surgical methods and the type of access for surgical treatment, you see that the Y gastric bypass was performed in 665 percent of the, uh, pay, uh, 65 patients. The duodenal switch was performed in 90, 93 patients, the resleeve gastrectomy in 95 patients, and the mini gastric bypass in 141 patients. Most uh, patients were operated by laparoscopy uh, in the field of sleeve gastric uh, to me, but you see the patients with duodenal switch had a high incidence and high risk for laparotomy due to the fact that in these patients uh, mostly were performed operated in some hospitals. If we look to the distribution and the frequency of the revision counts in our patients, so we can found that the reflux was the highest incidence for the revision rate in worldwide gastric bypass, and the weight regain was also a high incidence for reoperation in worldwide gastric bypass patients. For the mini gastric bypass, the uh, weight regain was the most performed incident on the reoperation in mini gastric bypass as well as in the re-sleeve uh, re gastrectomy. The interval between the primary sleeve gastrectomy and the redo surgery is also uh, from a very high interest for us and we made a decision in several years and we confound that the ruined Y gastric bypass was performed at least 2.3 years after primary sleeve gastrectomy and the MGP was performed mostly three years after primary sleeve gastrectomy, mostly in case of uh, weight regain or insufficiency of weight loss in our patients. The lowest uh, interval between sleeve gastrectomy and redo surgery we found in duodenal switch. And so we think that the duodenal switch was mostly performed in patients with a step by step concept was planned primary, but there was not performed about not data in the German bariatric surgery reaches the, so that may be a bias of our study that we redo the procedure of duodenal switch is mostly performed as a step-by-step -step procedure in severe obese patients. 
If we look to the data on the demographic data of our patients, you'll see that the patients with rural and gastric bypass after failed sleeve gastrectomy have the lowest BMI. And this, the, these are patients are mostly female. If we look further on, the do the night switch patients have the highest BMI and these are mostly male patients. The, when do the night switch were performed after failed sleeve gastrectomy. MGB and rural and y gastric bypass do not differ in the BMI as well as the sex. If we compare the ruined y gastric bypass, uh, if we compare the re sleeve gastrectomy and the mini gastric bypass as the, the, for the data on the uh, demographic data in this patient. If you look first on, you see the uh, perioperative data. You see the do the night switch operation has the highest and the length, the most length in operating time with nearly 147 minutes. It's, and in these patients, the post operative length of stay and the hospital day length of stay is much more longer than in all other procedures. You should know that the in Germany the postoperative length of stay and the hospital length of stay is much more longer than in all other countries worldwide. You know that the health insurance system does not cover the follow-up of the patients in Germany and it's there's not good education of the general practitioners of several colleagues and the so the patients are not well treated in the outpatient treatment so they mostly uh, stay long, longer in hospital especially if there's a large distance in between the hospital and the home country and the home reason of our patients you should also know that metabolic surgery is not a teaching program in the students in the medicine students in germany at the moment and so we have a lot of work in germany on this part if we look for asa classification in our patients or the most patients have asa classification too especially in patients with rural and y gastric bypass for rudinal switch and mgb we found much more lower differences in m asa classification if we look in the preoperative comorbidity, so the most patients have still comorbidities if we perform revisional surgery. Most patients suffer on diabetes, especially on insulin dependent uh, diabetes. Most patients suffer on arterial hypertension as well as reflux. And you can also see the most patients with gastroesophageal reflux disease were operated with ruined via gastric bypass in Germany, followed by MGB in this patient. If you can also, and that's my opinion as well, you can also pay, perform a re sleeve gastrectomy in this patient, especially in patients with no or a very, very small hiatal hernia, with no acid reflux, especially if you found a reflux of volume and not of acid in this patient. Look we to the intraoperative and postoperative complication rates in our patients. So we find very high complication rates intraoperative for duodenal switch procedure as well for ruined uh, re sleeve gastrectomy. And you have performed and you have informed your patients that these operations and these complications are higher than in the primary procedure. Mostly these are other complications. These are not the complication of injury of spleen or vascular range injury. These are mostly complications in effect of adhesions and other very, very important and rare complications. If we look to the general complication rate, so we find a very high general complication rate for patients with do the night switch and re sleeve gastrectomy for failed ga sleeve gastrectomy. And these are mostly other complications. He here are uh, the mention is the high level of inflammatory 
uh, enzymes and parameters and uh, wound infections as well in this patients also but we see a higher incidence on pulmonary and uh, renal complication rates in these patients, especially in comparison with MGP and RU and Y gastric bypass. If we look at first run on the specific complication rates, so also we find the same uh, few that do the null switch and resleeve gastrectomy have a high incidence on specific complications. These are for duodenal switch, 14% and for resleeve gastrectomy, 15.8%. And it's much more higher than for ruined y gastric bypass and mini gastric bypass. These complications are bleeding with transfusion or revisional surgery, but these are mostly leakage at the anastomotic, anastomosis or at the Resleeve with a stable line leakage in this patient. And if we have in this patient a stable line leakage, we have mostly in abscess, we found sepsis, we found peritonitis, or we found wound, inf wound infection. And that's why you have to inform your patients on this higher and much more higher complication rates after resleeve gastrectomy. If we look on the effect of BMI one year after, uh, of one year follow up in this patient, you see that the mean weight loss and the mean BMI reduction is the lowest in the patients with red Y gastric bypass. In all other procedures, we found a higher loss of weight and a higher BMI reduction. Uh, than in RU and Y gastric bypass. So we had to inform that the BMI reduction in this patient, uh, if we perform RU and Y gastric bypass is low, and in the mean, the patients will be lost about 16 kilogram in one postoperative year after RU and Y gastric bypass after sleeve, failed sleeve gastrectomy. If we're looking for the comorbidities, we find a good effect on the remission of the insulin and non-insulin dependent diabetes for all procedures, but we can also see that ruined by gastric bypass has the lowest effect on remission on diabetes in these patients. And if you look further on, on the effects on comorbidities, you can see that the sleep apnea, you find a remission, it's very different in all procedures, and it's depend primary from the primary evaluation on sleep apnea. But you can see in the very, very important issue and on reflux, reflux disease, you find after Ru and Y gastric bypass a complete remission of reflux and 71.1%. But you can also find a worsening of reflux disease in about 13% of the patients. You can also find a worsening of reflux disease after duodenal switch as well as MGB. As I mentioned, and as I would like to suggest from this data, I suggest that you had performed prior to revisional surgery after sleeve gastrectomy, a gastroscopy, a x-ray to look on the anatomy of the sleeve, on look on the anatomy of the hiatus, and to look if there is a fontos dilatation after sleeve gastrectomy. And you have to perform a pH metry and manometry on this patient. In my opinion, you had to avoid to find patients with signs of achalasy and hypomotility of the esophagus. In this patient, you cannot perform all these procedures. And in the patients with the hypomotility of the esophagus, you cannot perform a re sleeve gastrectomy after failed sleeve gastrectomy, you will be found a worsening of the reflux. 
And on the other hand, you have a large hiatal hernia, you have a dilated fundus, and you have uh, acid reflux. You should make a decision for the patient, but you should not suggest the patient a breast leaf gastrectomy. Finally, I won't conclude our data. Patients with through and via gastric bypass after sleeve gastrectomy had a significant lower BMI preoperatively than all other patients by the highest incidence of reflux. Hypo or malabsorptive procedures and through sleeve gastrectomy causing higher preoperative complication rates, especially the leakage of the anastomosis and the leakage of the staple line. Weight loss and the amelioration of comorbidities is better after hypoabsorptive procedures than after re sleeve gastrectomy as well as ruined Y gastric bypass. In case of reflux and barrier esophagitis, ruined Y gastric bypass seems at the moment the meet the method of choice. You should perform in this patient a ruined Y gastric bypass to have a suffering and the treatment of the Barrett esophagitis in these patients. In all other patients, you need an excellent indication and you need an excellent information on the patients, on the risks, on the complications, perioperatively, the short-term risks, as well as the long-term risks. As we performed in my hospital a long-term hypoabsorptive surgery procedures. And I suggest you have to inform the patient. You have to avoid long-term complications in this patient. And I would like to mention the data from Nicolas Papadia on the long-term results on biliopancreatic diversion if you use hypo and malabsorptive procedures in the, these patients. We need, that's my opinion, better long-term data. We need this to, uh, to evaluate a pathway for reoperations. I believe we had to evaluate and develop pathways for reoperation independent on the demographic data, independent on the comorbidities, as well as independent on the data of X-ray gastroscopy, and functional diagnostic of the esophagus. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. It was, it was a great, a great presentation. Uh, we asked the audience for uh, uh, write your questions in the in the question and answer box. We are you are free to do it, and we will uh, uh, read your questions to to Christine, and we will discuss it. And we have already some questions. Uh, one of the questions from from the audience is: You have some experience using uh, GLP one uh, analogs to uh, address these patients. Uh, before try to use uh, a revision of surgery? Uh, it's in Germany a big problem with the uh, GLP-1 analog due to the fact there is not covered by the health insurance system. And you can uh, uh, cover this from the uh, as a private uh, access or you can give this patient if, you, if the patient suffer on diabetes. And in the moment we don't have en enough GLP-1 analog in Germany, we have not enough for the diabetes patients at the moment, and so it's quite difficult to suggest this way the biotic patients. Sometimes we suggest GLP-1 analog if the patients have a high BMI uh, and had a rate regain. But uh, I believe you have also in these patients to look to the uh, behavior modification and uh, have to change the behavior modification and look to support this patient in that way as well. Yes, yes, that's that's a problem we we most of the countries uh, we are facing like the lack of uh, uh, 
uh, of medications around uh, hospitals, uh, it's it's very scarce. It's, it's not it's not very easy for the patients to 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 be found. Um, but on the other, other question, perhaps yes? I can add uh, on the other end side, we don't have any experience. If we have the patient in the we could more call it a neo one setting with GLP-1 analog. If what will be happened if you operate and, and stop the GLP-1 analog? Does they have a lower weight loss? We don't know this data. We have no any data on such a treatment. We need studies, but the industry doesn't perform in the moment the studies due to the lack of the availability of GLP-1 analog. Yes, also, also that uh, the evidence is not completely done around the, the, the medication. Uh, another question from the audience. Uh, you already talked a, a little bit about that, about the different uh, indication for the procedures around comorbidities, uh, reflux, or, um, or uh, uh, weight uh, uh, regain. Uh, but the, the the question is: Did you have any uh, criteria or the stratification of which patients go to? Because maybe a patient have diabetes and and, and weight uh, regain, or or a patient had reflux yeah. and diabetes. So you have any criteria to choose the procedure? Yeah. Uh, yes, we try to choose the procedure for the patient. If you have a patient with a uh... Uh, reflux and the BMI um, lower than 40. Yeah, then we will perform in this patient mostly uh, urine y gastric bypass with a uh, alimentary limb of one, uh, 150 cc and a biliary limb of 60 cc. If we have patients with reflux and a very high BMI, uh, then we we, uh, we change uh, the the limbs and the, we perform a biliary limb of 200 or 150 cc and the alimentary limb of 60 cc in these patients. But there are the data from the literature not so well on this changing of the, the limbs. And in patients without reflux and weight regain, we mostly perform ORGP or sometimes if the patient, it's a wish of the patient or if the reoperations or other operations in before, then we perform also SADI or SASI procedure. But this do we all very, very, very few in our hospital due to the fact that we have the very bad experience with the long term complications of the hypoabsorptive uh, surgery and the long term support of this patient. And that's a big problem, in my opinion. And in patients with uh, diabetes, for instance, you have a patient uh, had. Uh, medication of diabetes before sleeve gastrectomy, then the diabetes was in remission and it started again, then we normally perform a ruined Y gastric bypass. Okay, yes, great. Thank you, Christine. Another question for the audience. You already talked about the, the different uh, BMI uh, uh, values around the groups. Uh, switch group, ring y group, around 40. So the, the, all, all groups were around 40 years in, in the BMIs. But the question goes uh, uh, asking about a, a lower limit. Do you have a lower limit for the revision or it was the comorbidities uh, a more useful value to go uh, and do the procedure instead of the BMI? Yes, uh, there is, uh, especially in case of reflux, there is not lower limit. We do uh, the reoperation of uh, red Y gastric bypass after sleeve gastric to me in the case of reflux as well as a BM in, in patients with BMI 30, sometimes lower due to the fact to treat the reflux. And we know that the weight loss after rent Y is in this patient about 10 or 15 kilograms. And we can look if there's any problem if, uh, to perform a rent Y gastric bypass in this patient. 
And for the other patients, we don't have any strong criteria for lowest BMI. It depends on the comorbidities. Yes, but uh, sometimes if you have a severe diabetes, for instance, you also have to look for the diabetes and made the decision if you change or made a reoperation in this patient. Thank you. There was a something you said that was that, that, uh, that uh, was very interesting about the way you uh, practice bariatrics uh, surgery in, in Germany about the the follow up that the patients do not. Uh, get covered or do, do not have a follow-up in your in the clinic how, how the patients go back to you how is it the process of this patient getting uh, the, the follow-up in, in Germany that's quite difficult in Germany there are some programs of some insurances there is now a better situation in this patient so it's possible that the patient come back to the um, surgery or to, to the a general practitioner with a high experience. On the other hand side, there are many patients lost in the follow-up due to the fact there is no recovering of the health insurance system. And we have always to look what's happened with the patient. Uh, there is in the next year, it seems to be a start in a new program on the uh, follow-up of the patients. It should, but the problem will be that the general practitioners should be done the program and I'm a bit, a bit skeptical if it really be a good way for the long-term uh, indication and long-term problems of these patients. Oh, I see. It's, it's very interesting uh, in, a, in, a, in a situation. Okay, very good. Thank you, Christine. Um, uh, I, I was very, very... Uh, uh, I, I noticed something in your paper about uh, about the uh, kidney renal complications around those sleep patients, those, those sleep patients. Do you do you know, or you, you what was your opinion about why those patients go 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 got those complications? Only those patients. And in Germany, it's usual that most of the patients, or it would be usual that most of the patients get an uh, urinary catheter during the operation time. And that's why we have a high rate of urinary infection and we had only very, very low incidence of rhabdomyolysis. But we have also to look at this problem in some patients. Thank you. You were... At the end of the of the presentation, you were talking about uh, the the whole process of uh, of studying this patient because this revisional surgery is is something we do not we need to address properly. We need to do scans and a proper evaluation of the patient. In your in your evaluation of these patients, uh, in the in the CT scans you perform before the procedure, did you? Uh, get any specific values around volume or your, of the sleeves around which value uh, in, in, in volume it's a proper value like 150 200 300 which which is the 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 a good measurement between a good sleeve and a not very good sleeve. Normally, we don't uh, perform any CT scan, only if they have a very large hiatal hernia. We don't perform a CT scan to have a measurement of the uh, uh, size of the sleeve. If you have a normally X-ray, you normally see in this patient in enlarged fundus. Uh, yesterday day we have seen a patient with an uh, not resected fundus, I will say, and the stenosis uh, lower than the fundus, and he has a dilated esophagus. He has uh, a very good weight regain, but he cannot eat. Uh, he can only eat liquid uh, liquids. And so uh, we made this decision. We don't perform in all this patient uh, CT scan this measurement. Thank you. Uh, another question from the audience. Uh, talking about this complex process around the patients with uh, weight recurrence and 
complications after a sleep. Uh, do you have any uh, thoughts about the process of uh, education and uh, encouragement of the patient of doing some uh, nutritional management and psychological management management uh, before the procedure or after the procedure to get better results of the revisional surgery or to avoid revisional surgery? Uh, we do this in my hospital, but I cannot really say that there is a difference in the res uh, results in those patients. There's only, not in the psychological evaluation, there are only difference in the eating behavior of the patient. If there is very a big problem with the eating and you, you have a weight regain, due to the effect of the uh, bad eating behavior of these patients. But you, in these cases, you have to make to a, a decision for the patient. This is a really indication for reoperation. And if it, you have the opinion it's an indication for reoperation, you have to make a decision. Is this perhaps a patient for a hypoabsorptive surgery and not for an ORGB or a red white gastric bypass? And in this patient, you don't uh, have a very good weight loss. Yes, we need to remember that th this this paper comes from a, a big database from a, a, a very well organized and very com a huge uh, German database that comes with uh, its benefits and also with some uh, its advantages. But it's a it's a it's a very good good uh, tool for doing this kind of research. Um, and another question from from the from the audience. Uh, do you have any uh, explanation for those uh, rates of complications in resleeps or the Donald switch? I believe the complications in do in do the Donald switch is uh, can be explained that a high number of reoperations is performed in open surgery. And that's why it's uh, one reason of the high complication rates and the other uh, reason maybe that there is the experience uh, that you, you have to remember that the data were collected since 2005. And there was the, in 2005, there was the experience with laparoscopic duodenal switch until 2010 or 2011 was very low. And that's why I believe that we have uh, in this time a, very, a higher complication rate. It's now it's more much more experience on laparoscopic do it and that switch. And it was also a time when we performed, I remember at this time, uh, the do it and that switch as a single step procedure. Uh, for the re-sleeve gastrectomy, I believe there's a higher complication rate due to the fact that you have a higher risk of leakage. And you have also be careful in this patient to, uh, to avoid uh, leakage um, sometimes you have to look for preparation very strong and you have not, uh, I believe you have not to, uh, to perform a very, very tight sleeve. If you perform a very, very tight sleeve in this patient, you have a higher risk of leakage. And sometimes you, or mostly you operate patients not from your own hospital, you have operate patients from other hospitals and you mostly don't know if there is uh, was a, a stable line reinforcement. Sometimes you find uh, sutures in the area of the uh, hiatus, and that's maybe a reason for the higher uh, uh, risk uh, complication rates of re sleeve gastrectomy. Thank you, Christine. It's, that's, uh, I think that answered it, its solid goal, mostly for, for young surgeons, because sometimes uh you may think that res leave it's a better option than a ring wire or OEGB or maybe a easier a easier option for a revision. And you need to be very, very careful because doing a res leave in, 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 in a patient you do not you do, you do not know how, how the first surgery was and you have uh you you, you don't know what we will expect sutures, staples, uh reinforcement and then that that's why the, the the leak percentage it's 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 higher. So that's 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 very important to to be reminded uh, in this kind of cases. Uh, 
thank you for 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 all these questions. It's 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 great to see all the all this engagement. Thank you. Uh, another question from the audience. In Germany, it's 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 a routine to check for yatal hernia during the sleep. Sorry, in Germany, it's in Germany, it's it's a routine to check for a yatal hernia during the sleep. Uh, not during the no, surgery. Not, normally not, but it's in Germany. It's a routine to perform a gastroscopy prior to surgery. That's uh, performed in more than. 95% of the patients and then you know if you have a hiatal hernia or not and in uh, cases with hiatal hernia and reflux we mostly perform worldwide gastric bypass there's only uh, one uh, uh, one uh, situation if you have the situation that you uh, that you want to perform worldwide gastric bypass and there is a very very high mass of visceral fat and it's not possible to have a very very easy anastomosis of, of the rent why then we sometimes perform the uh, sleeve gastrectomy as a first step and perform the rent why gastric bypass uh, nine or 12 months uh, after sleeve gastric part, uh, to me that sometimes in patients mostly these are patients with a high uh, insulin dose dosage uh, with a high visceral fat mass and a very short mesenteric. Okay, great. That's 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 even better because it's it's, it's not uh, mo in most countries we do not have the means to perform routinely laparoscopy, so we need to check for yes. the hernia during the procedure. But uh, that's even better. Ah, uh, a very interesting question in from the audience. It's. What's your opinion or what do you think there's, there was a very high incidence of reflux in the red white gastric bypass group? Uh, because it was around 40%, right? Yes. What's your opinion on that? Uh, I believe that in, in this case, is the red white gastric bypass was performed in the knowledge of a hiatal hernia. And we normally not uh, close the hiatal hernia uh, during the red white gastric bypass. So it's usually that the pouch is uh, possible to slip in the thorax and you have performed the uh, hiatus or the hiatus surgery after weight loss. And sometimes it's also be possible that if you have a stenosis of the uh, gastroenterostomy as a reason for the reflux, especially if you perform a circular anastomosis. It is still in some hospitals performed in Germany. And it's also be a possibility for the high incidence of reflux in rural Y patients. Right, great. Thank you, thank you. Perfect. So at, at the at the end of your presentation or on your conclusions, you conclude that malabsorptive procedures were better in 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 terms of uh, weight loss uh, after after a a, a a revision of surgery for a sleeve. But then we come with the rest of the procedure. So uh, from the rest of the procedure, which one? Do you recommend better receive or in Y or OGV? Uh, I, I, in my opinion, it depends on the indication. Uh, for if you have a reflux, you should perform a red Y gastric bypass. If you have a very large fundus and uh, not uh, enough weight loss in this patient, there's the can could be the next step uh, a resleeve gastrectomy. And if you have perhaps a severe di diabetes or an insufficiency of weight loss, you should perform MGB or in some patients hypoabsorptive uh, surgery with SADI or SASI. Great. Uh, just to uh, summarize, we, we are reaching the almost the end of our time. Uh, at the end of your of your presentation or your paper, you talk about um, real white gastric bypass uh, being the most prevalent procedure as a revision of the surgery, uh, switch being the most useful or the most uh, effective for uh, weight loss, but with um, more concerns about the requirements and the education of the patient and the risk of malnutrition and OIGB 
being a new uh, runner-up, um, being a, a, a new a tool to be looked as a new uh, best option for, for revisional surgery. And then comes this new procedure like SASI and, 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 and SADIS and stuff. As a conclusion for, for, for this great, great presentation at Journal Club, what are your conclusions about what's the future for revisional surgery? What's the future for uh, the procedure that, that we are going to have in, your, in our arsenal to help our patients to achieve uh, a better solution from their problems? Uh, in my personal opinion, uh, we need a pathway. We need a pathway for this patient, uh, independent on comorbidities, on BMI, and on, uh, for instance, the, uh, the, the weight in the patient. And we need this pathway to make the best decision. And for this, we need also a very executive uh, diagnostics uh, prior surgery. And I believe we can only collect this data if we have uh, large uh, studies and registries to collect this data and found the reasons for this patient. And sometimes you don't uh, don't have to uh, forget this there, that you have also patients, uh, for instance, car drivers or taxi drivers, where there is sometimes a bit. Uh, a trouble if you want to perform um, SADI or SASI or worldwide gastric bypass for, for instance, diarrhea or for instance, uh, dumping syndrome. And so you, it's also in all patients, it's a indication depends from BMI, comorbidities and reasons for indication, as well as from the patient's wish. You can't, can't perform any operation. It's not the patient's suggestion or wish to perform this or that. You have to inform the patient that's clear, but the patient has also and to say his opinion and the patient are mostly well informed. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Christine. Okay, guys. It's 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 around time. We we need to then greatly to Christine for this amazing, amazing presentation. Uh, great paper, great discussion, great conclusions. Uh, and and as, as, a, as a final thought that, that she already said, uh, we need more papers like this. We need more data like this. We, we need a pathway. We need more, uh, uh, we need to develop more uh, guidelines to get uh, better and better uh, instructions to follow to instruct our patients to get instructions also to follow to uh, achieve better results. Remember, this presentation got recorded and will be uploaded to our virtual academy at YouTube. Uh, it was a real pleasure talking to you, Christine. One more time, congratulations on a great, great paper. And I hope to see you all of you in our next, next journal club in our next Congress. Thank you, Christine. Have a great, great day. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you for the opportunity to present our paper.